Our guest thinks Canada is in a good position to begin liquefied natural gas exports from the West Coast. That's despite the massive expenditure involved and competition from other gas producers around the world. He has some ideas on how investors can cash in on the LNG boom that's taking place in Kitimat, BC right now. They're working on or planning massive export facilities. We're joined by Keith Schaefer, editor, publisher of the Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin. Great to see you. Thanks for having me, Andrew. We've heard from Terry Biswanath of BNP Paribas, other sources, that Canada's going to have a tough time competing because we need all kinds of pipeline infrastructure. It's so expensive to build in BC. There's a lot of work to be done, for sure. But what, one thing that really encourages me about Canada's position is that we are kind of at the vanguard of a lot of the small-scale LNG development that's going on in the world. The first project that's going to work offshore for us is being done by the Heisler First Nation and a London company called Golar. And they're going to have one of the first really small-scale LNG facilities, and west coast of Canada will be where it really makes its debut. Where and what's the name of that one? That, that's the BC LNG or the Douglas Channel project. Right, and give us some idea of the scale. It's not nearly as big as the big one Shell is talking about. Right, most of these groups are talking anywhere between two and a half to five BCF a day, billion cubic feet. This is one tenth to one twentieth that size at 0.2 BCF a day. So really what that means is not only is it going to be lower cost overall, but lower cost per billion cubic feet. So they're talking about a a capex that's going to be about half what it is for the big projects and that I really think is going to make a big difference for us getting our gas offshore quicker. So we're looking at some of the gigantic projects there and uh, of course uh, uh, and the BCLNG and of course we haven't even heard about Exxon they've kind of muttered darkly about building a gigantic facility we won't give any details at this stage. No I think what you're seeing is all the majors are lining up right now putting their hat in the ring and then as the tax laws become more clear uh -huh. and the macro situation on LNG becomes a bit more clear, clear you're going to start to see them dive in a bit more. Yeah kind of a standoff between the energy companies and BC right now over the between the uh, buyers and sellers. Uh, and yeah, yeah, and also the government, how they'll tax this thing as well. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's get it to an idea. Golar, it trades on the uh, New York Stock Exchange, and they are involved in this high to, uh, highs led back to project. Right. So they're uh, GLNG on the NASDAQ, and they're 25% owner of this project, and they're bringing the technology in that will make small scale LNG work. So they've done it on the uh, regasification side where they're turning the liquid back into a gas and this will be the first project on small scale where they're putting the gas into a liquid so we're going to be the leaders in that and that is scheduled to be in production late 2015. And Golar, what are they going to do? They're going to own the gas right all the way through or how does that work? What they're proposing right now is that they will buy the gas and take all the price risk. So that's where they're really got a chance to make a lot of money because they should be the ones that captures most of the arbitrage between the low Canadian gas price and the high Asian gas price. And um, well, I mean, that's amazing. We could talk about Golar all day, but you have another a couple of ideas. They're going to need to be doing a lot of fracking in BC to produce all this gas. Canyon Services are experts in that area. Why do you like that stock? Well, I like it because it's an all Canadian play. And generally, the, the Canadian frackers get higher profit margins than the Americans. And so now, with LNG becoming a reality, you've got a 10 year visibility of growth here in, in fracking in Western Canada. They need to invest billions. So, anyone like a Halliburton or Noble in the States or Schlumberger from Europe who wants to get a bigger piece of this industry, Canyon's a perfect takeout target for them. What's the stock symbol on then? Uh, FRC. FRC, okay. And then Precision, Western Energy, they're also going to be players here, obviously. Sure, I, and, and those are the safe plays. Those are the larger cap plays that are going to get uh, the big business first. Precision Drilling is the largest drilling company in Canada. Western Energy Services, they've got a, a really good fleet of deep drill rigs, so they're, they're going to benefit too. Uh, we've less than 60 seconds. The environmentalists, environmentalists say this fracking it, it uses enormous amounts of electricity, enormous amounts of water. It's going to be. Will a lot of environmental damage be done potentially? Uh, n not with fracking. You know, you're, you're seeing fracking move towards a using a lot less water and b. Uh, you're seeing uh, much more environmentally friendly fluids come out. There, there's a real competition in the industry to make that a lot more green. And, and science has shown very clearly it really doesn't affect groundwater. So I don't see that as an issue. 
-hmm. Amazing story on an amazing scale. Thanks so much, Keith. Thanks, Andrew. Keith Schaefer is editor and publisher of the Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin. Well, thanks very much for watching our show. I think we had three amazing guests today. You remember, you can catch reruns of commodities throughout the day. BNN.ca is the place to go. And we love hearing from you, our viewers. Please email us at commodities.